Hello, our last presentation of the day is Allison Swisher with the City of Joliet and Joe Sullivan with RJN talking about Joliet's five-year sewer program. Allison? Thank you, Zach. My name is Allison Swisher. I'm the Director of Public Utilities for the City of Joliet. And I'm Joe Sullivan. I'm the Project Manager and Office Manager for RJN's Joliet office. And today we're going to be talking about the five-year sewer investigation and rehabilitation uh, program that the City prepared with the help of RJN. And to get started, we're going to talk about uh, some of the um, background of the city system. Um, the city of Joliet is the third largest city in the state of Illinois by population. And I'm very proud to say that we are the largest entity in the state that provides all four key water and sewer services. So that's water distribution and treatment, as well as sewer collection and treatment. Uh, today we're just going to be focused on the sanitary sewer collection system. So within the city we have about 571 miles of sanitary sewer that's both separate and combined, over 12,000 manholes, 43 lift stations, and we serve a population of about 173,000 people. That includes about 149,000 residents within the city of Joliet as well as eight satellite districts um, that convey their wastewater through the Joliet system to our wastewater treatment plants for treatment. The three wastewater treatment plants um, treat an average uh, daily flow of about 27 uh, million gallons. And you can see from this uh, map here that the city has a very large service area, it's about 62 square miles. And that system is managed and uh, maintained by seven full-time city employees with our sewer department and then a host of contractors. So um, back in 2014, the city had not done any rehabilitation. And so the city, this sewer system was being maintained just on a react reactionary basis. So if a sewer was um, collapsed, we'd go out and fix it. Or if there was um, an overflow, we'd go out and uh, clean the sewer but it was just done on a case-by-case -case basis and there was no systematic approach. So we realized that there was definitely a need. We had hot spot areas. These were areas where we had significant um, resident complaints, um, high occurrence of basement backups and SSOs, and just in general, Joliet's uh, older town. So we had areas where we definitely needed to focus our attentions. So in 2014, the city issued a request for qualifications to hire an uh, engineering consulting firm to assist us in preparing a five-year program uh, with the goals of minimizing basement backups, restoring structural integrity of the system, and also reducing the amount of I&I &I in the system. And so through that process, we selected RJN Group and have been working with them over the last five years to prepare this program. And so in 2014, we were focusing on these hotspot areas, again, known areas, uh, problems with areas with known problems. So I'll just briefly talk about these areas. Um, the Kerwin Estates neighborhood, this was built in about the 1930s and had a high occurrence of basement backups, typically occurring with a one year storm event. Um, the area had already attempted some rehabilitation with um, footing tile separation, but the problem was still occurring. The Haldeman Terrace neighborhood, this was also an older neighborhood constructed in the 1920s. It was unique in that the um, sanitary sewer was located in a backyard utility easement that over the past hundred years was no longer uh, accessible. Garages had been constructed on it. Uh, and so the sanitary sewer was located beneath the water main within this eight foot easement and the depths were sometimes up to 20 feet. So anytime we would have a sewer collapse, um, it could cost um, upwards of $60,000, $65,000 to have a contractor come in and um, complete the repair. Uh, and then the last area that we were focused on initially was the Edge Creek Belmont Interceptor area. Now the Edge Creek area was a new, relatively new um, subdivision that was built and then it was uh, connected to a downstream sewer system that was uh, undersized to serve this area. So we were seeing a high frequency of alleged SSOs in the um, Edge Creek uh, subdivision. So we knew we had to look at the system as a whole to try and correct those problems. So really we had an evolution of a sewer program. What started back in 2014 is knowing that we had these hotspot areas 
led to flow monitoring and SSES, which then over the past five years has de developed into quite an extensive program of both capital improvement projects as well as operations and uh, maintenance projects. And we'll talk about those in more detail through the presentation. And another main outcome of the five-year program was this five-year rehabilitation program. The city um, knew that we had done no rehabilitation for almost 100 and 140 years. So we were significantly behind the curve. And so to jumpstart the program, we developed a approximately $35 million program to correct or to rehabilitate approximately $7 million of uh, sewer system um, rehabilitation over five years. And that consisted of a variety of uh, sewer rehabilitation techniques. So now I'm gonna talk, turn it over to Joe who will talk about these areas in more detail. Okay, thanks Allison. <clears throat> As uh, Allison had kind of mentioned before, we had started the program with a few hotspot areas. Uh, the first one that we got into was the Edge Creek lift station area. So there were frequent SSOs occurring, alleged SSOs, um, right upstream of the lift station. Um, that was happening in about a six-month event. Um, IEPA was called and the compliance commitment agreement was established with IEPA. So we developed a work plan that included inspections, uh, full SSES, and um, rehabilitation. Um, put that plan together, IPA accepted it, and then we executed that plan. Um, there was some bottlenecking with the lift station and then downstream control, and ultimately it uh, was determined that there was a lack of capacity in the Belmont interceptor, which was a 10-inch interceptor for about 6,000 feet. Um, so that was limiting the flow that could get through the pipes. Um, so we did a full SSES for this area. You can see the flow monitoring basins here in this exhibit. Um, we also did 100% hydraulic modeling of this area because of the downstream control and the capacity issues. One of the unique things on this uh, project was the MTA inspection of the force main. So that gave us a look at the old force main that ran from the Edge Creek lift station all the way down to the soccer field where, um, where it met up with the Belmont interceptor that was undersized and overflows were occurring at either end of that inner, either end of that force main. But um, rehabs in methods included private sector disconnects, a full manhole rehab program, sewer grouting. This area was interesting because it was built in the 80s. The Edge Creek area, which is to the east, was built in the 80s. And it was mostly all uh, PVC pipe, SDR 35, but because it wasn't backfilled properly, a lot of the pipes were flexed and were allowing uh, water in and all the joints or the connections to the manholes. So grouting became an important piece of the, the puzzle for this area. Um, there was some CIPP lining done in the midsection, which was known as which is known as Parkwood Park Hill. But the most interesting part of this whole program was the undersized interceptor that was uh, led to a full design for a replacement a 24 inch new sewer going down route six so the old sewer had gone along through the ravines and you see it highlighted there in yellow and the new sewer is this dashed line going down route six which will alleviate a lot of the uh, the overflow and, and problems that were occurring Engineering costs roughly 700,000. <clears> Construction estimated about 5.7 when all is said and done. So total cost for this area was about 6.4 million. Uh, Kerwin Estates was another one of the hotspot areas when we first got started. So a lot of residents were complaining about basement backups. Um, there was some downstream control observed with flow monitoring. So we did look at some options for alleviating downstream control and, and the footing tiles that Allison had mentioned were still, you know, although a, a good number of them had been separated, there were still a bunch of them out there that weren't found. Um, so that was part of the assessment of this area. <clears throat> so for Kerwin Estates, because of the frequent backups that were occurring, we did do a, a hydraulic model again for this area. Um, the homes that are shown in red were the ones that were most um, likely to get basement backups during a one-year, five-year storm event. The ones in yellow were were the next tier that were kind of medium risk, and then the 
the greens and the blues. Our blues were no basement backup or no basements, and the greens were a low risk. The ones that had no color, um, those didn't get backups at all. But <clears throat> we looked at, um, because of the downstream control, we looked at a possible relief sewer to alleviate some of the, the backups that were occurring. It, it didn't prove to be cost effective, and the models showed that with a 30% INI reduction in a few homes up in the northwest area going on to overhead sewer, that uh, we could basically achieve a 25-year level of protection for the majority of homes in this basin. Um, we, we've just finished construction in this area, so we've got our post-rehab flow monitors in, and we're hoping to do a, a success, success story on this one next year. Um, engineering costs, roughly 300,000. Construction, about 1.3 million, and overall 1.6. That brings us to Haldeman Terrace, uh, which was a tough area that was all backyard sewers, um, difficult access as, as Allison mentioned, there were um, garages and swimming pools and things that were constructed over the sewer that shouldn't have been there. There was one um, location where the, the ComEd utility pole had actually gone down and crushed the sewer in one location. Um, foundation drains were also prevalent in this neighborhood because it was an old combined sewer area. Uh, the unique thing about this was the water mains that were also in the backyard and were getting relocated. So the city was relocating the water mains to the front and rehabbing the sewers in the back so we could be free of uh, collapses and you know problems in this area. So we did the full SSCS for Haldeman. Um, conti continued with private sector disconnects of downspouts, uh, window wells, things like that, full manhole rehab and CIPP lining. Um, what was interesting about this area was we did 100% five foot T liners for all the, all the properties that had a connection to the backyard sewer. So within that 10 foot, or I guess as an eight foot easement, we did five foot T liners for each property. So 100% of those got done. Um, then we also had quite a few point repairs. There were 13 point repairs done on the main lines to accommodate CIPP lining and T-lining. But during the T-lining phase, we found 16 additional um, point repairs that were needed right on the laterals adjacent to the main line. So in order to achieve that 100% uh, T-lining, we, we had to do 16 lateral point repairs as well. Engineering costs were right around 200,000, construction 1.7 million for an overall cost of 1.9 million. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Allison to talk a little bit about a more systematic approach to the sewer program. Thank you. So now that we've kind of addressed the uh, hot spot areas, we recognize that our work is not done and there's still a significant portion of, of town that needs sewer rehabilitation. So, you know, we're looking to move into a more systematic approach, um, basing our, our prioritizing our, our rehab areas based on um, high priorities identified through flow monitoring. So for 2019, we're planning to do flow monitoring in our west side wastewater treatment basin. And from there, then we can take data we have from our east side and and develop uh, the next five years of uh, investigations and rehabilitation. And, uh, you know, to assist us in developing the program, we also rely on information that we gather from our system-wide cleaning and televising program. So we have um, a goal of televising 10% or approximately 50 miles of our sanitary sewer system each year. This is done um, on a contract basis. We've worked with both National Power Routing and, and Michaels to, to do this work. And uh, what we get from this is then RJN re reviews um, uh, certain segments of the of the sewer televising where there's a high priority needs, whether that's maintenance issues or structural issues. And from there, then we can generate um, annual point repair projects that are either done um, by contractors or by city staff. And we also then use this data to help guide our maintenance programs. Um, we know areas where heavy cleaning was performed or where grease was removed, and we can target those areas for annual maintenance cleaning, and as well as helps, uh, develop, help, uh, help us develop a three-year uh, route program where we can go in and treat only those segments where we have um, known route issues. So 
we've gone from really having a program that was based on known problem areas to moving into a more systematic approach. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty, um, I'm pr happy to, that we've been able to accomplish so much in, in five years and moving into the next, uh, you know, five, 10 years, we have uh, a plan in place that will help us, um, you know, move forward with rehabilitating uh, the Joliet sewer system. And as Joe mentioned, we hope that uh, with the post school monitoring we're conducting this year, we'll be able to come back next year with uh, some success stories about um, the rehabilitation work that we've been completing. Do we have any questions? Okay, thank you, Joe, and thank you, Allison, for joining us. Uh, that concludes our 2018 Chicagoland Workshop presentation. If you have any questions about this presentation or any others, please feel free to reach out to the presenter or your RJN project manager, client manager contact. Thank you for listening and have a great day.